I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. Norman Finkelstein has never shot away from controversy. The American Jew is banned from Israel and pledges full support for the Palestinian people. The author and former professor has lost jobs and faced death threats for his opinion. Every single member of my family heated debates documented in the film American Radical, a subject we begin with during RT's interview. I want to start uh, with a question about your new documentary, American Radical. It has been described uh, in many ways, but one being uh, an intimate portrait of a man behind the controversy. Tell me about the documentary, why you decided to make this film. I actually have not seen the documentary, uh, but many <laughs> you're surprised by that. <laughs> For some reason, I didn't want to see myself on the silver screen, and so I chose not to watch it. But my friends, many of my close friends watched it, and for better or for worse, they said it's an accurate portrayal of me. But I, I was obviously involved in the making of the documentary, though I asked not to be consulted about the content. I didn't want anyone in the future to say that I was making a promo for myself. Uh, as to why I got involved in it, my basically f feeling was, well, my closest friend over many decades is Professor Chomsky, and uh, I tried to look to him for moral guidance, and he made many films, or he would participate in many films uh, about himself and about his personal background, so I thought there was nothing politically incorrect or vain about participating in such a film and so I went ahead and did it. The one thing that didn't quite turn out right was I thought there would be a lot more on my time in Palestine and to meet some of my friends from there. <clears throat> but when we went over to shoot that segment of the documentary, I was barred entry. And so we never really got a full picture from that side. Well, you brought up Professor Chomsky and the issue of being barred from, from entering I Israel. Mm -hmm. um, we know that he was uh, recently in that same situation. Were you surprised? Were you not surprised because you yourself had experienced that? Uh, I was a little bit surprised because Professor Chomsky is in a category all of his own. And however much Jews may feel hostility towards him for his political views, <clears throat> they still take pride in the fact that Professor John Chomsky is a certified and acknowledged genius. So they take pride in the fact that he's Jewish and a genius. And it was surprising that a person of his stature would also have been turned away. And it represents, I think, you know, a serious uh, deterioration in Israeli, let's just call it decision making. The Israelis for a long time pride themselves on being very rational as against the emotional Arabs. But now they're acting in clearly a very irrational and also counterproductive, from their own point of view, uh, counterproductive way. They got terrible PR for denying an 82-year-old man uh, who is by any reckoning one of the greatest minds in human history, mm -hmm. denying him entry. Because it used to be that when Israelis dissented, the world praised them. Look how beautiful the Israelis are. When they do wrong, they feel anguished, they feel tormented. But now for the first time, the world is saying, we don't care about your anguish and torment we're holding you legally responsible for what you're doing. Don't give us the anguish and torment, or as it's called in Israel, the shooting and crying. We don't want the tears. We want accountability. And now Israelis feel very threatened because the, for the first time, and especially after the Goldstone Report and the threats of holding Israel before the International Criminal Court, they don't want to hear from dissent anymore because they're being asked to pay a price. Last time uh, we sat down, it was uh, shortly after the war in Gaza had ended. It was right before uh, Barack Obama became president. You were very open, uh, in your opinion, on what took place and who was wrong in that, uh, in that military conflict. Um, it's been over a year since uh, the Israeli assault on Gaza. What's your assessment of how uh, the Obama administration has done so far in uh, bringing permanent 
peace uh, to the Middle East. At the time when I made those comments, they appeared to be very controversial. Indeed, you might even say they were extreme. Mm -hmm. But when the Goldstone report came out, and bear in mind, uh, Richard Goldstone is not our only a respected jurist, but he's also Jewish, and by his own reckoning, he's a Zionist. Uh, Goldstone, his report concluded that, and I'm quoting it, that Israel launched a deliberately disproportionate attack designed to punish, humiliate, and terrorize the civilian population. Well, those are pretty strong words, punish, humiliate, and terrorize a civilian population. Uh, as to the record of the Obama administration, my recollection is uh, that I didn't have great expectations from what would come of the uh, Obama administration. And in fact, it's quite clear that nothing much came. Uh, there are occasional spats, you might call them, uh, between Israel and the United States, but there has been no American initiative to try to resolve the conflict in terms of international law, uh, the resolution of the conflict which the rest of the world embraces. If you move for a moment away from Israel-Palestine, you take the case of uh, Iran, since that's very topical now. Uh, Iran kept promising, uh, excuse me, Barack Obama kept promising there's going to be a change, there's going to be a change. But in fact, as several commentators wrote, the Barack Obama administration is carrying on like all other administrations. There was an offer made in October 2009 by the U.S. administration to Iran on how to resolve the nuclear issue. Iran at that time rejected the offer for several reasons, mostly because it didn't trust the main powers who were involved, France, the U.S., uh, even uh, Russia. But now it accepted that offer. And um, as the leading academic specialist on the topic, American academic specialist, Trita Parsi, Dr. Parsi wrote in the Washington Post, he says that uh, Barack Obama is refusing to take yes for an answer. Uh, and so there's no real difference between the so-called diplomatic approach of uh, Barack Obama and the um, uh, militaristic approach, as it's sometimes claimed, or belligerent approach of the Bush administration. At the end of the day, they demand that what they want is for Iran to cry uncle, for Iran to give in to U.S. power. Now, maybe Barack Obama does it with softer words and presents it with a more uh, a, 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 a appealing image, but the policy is basically the same. Do you think that there was um, a message also sent possibly to Turkey and Brazil with the with the draft resolution being introduced so quickly after this, the fuel swap deal was uh, agreed upon with Turkey, Brazil, and Iran? Yeah, well, it's quite clear. The United States feels like power is shifting. It's becoming more diffuse and the U.S. doesn't call all the shots in every place in the world. And uh, Turkey has carved out a more independent path uh, in recent years, uh, most notably when it refused to participate in the U.S. attack on Iraq. Uh, and uh, Brazil is an emerging power, and this was an attempt to cut them down to size. Let's stay on the topic of the United Nations and diplomacy, because from what I understand, you are lobbying to speak at the U.N. Uh, why? And what do you want to say? Well, I have been involved in the conflict now in a public way uh, for the past 30 years. I first got involved in June 1982 when Israel invaded Lebanon. And I do feel that in the wake of the massacre in Gaza, the Goldstone Report, uh, public opinion has dramatically changed. It's dramatically changed not only in internationally, but in the United States. And there's a real opportunity now to put forth a reasonable settlement to end the conflict. Not only to put it forth, but for there to be a receptive audience for such a, real, a reasonable settlement. And I feel that given my personal background, the fact that my parents were both survivors of the Nazi Holocaust, my father was a survivor of Auschwitz concentration camp, my mother of Maidana concentration camp, uh, every member of their families on both sides were exterminated during the war. Uh, we never had any aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, nothing. We were just, as my late mother used to say, five people in the world, my mother, my father, and my two brothers and myself. My family background, my professional background. I have written many books on the topic, and I think it's fair to say without sounding immodest, I am a recognized authority on the conflict. And um, 
uh, the fact that I have been personally involved. I've made a substantial commitment, one might even say my own little way, I've paid some price for the commitment I've made. And most importantly, I've tried very desperately, very hard to be reasonable, to figure out a reasonable proposal based on international law to end the conflict. But we should be clear, I have no interest in being the vi victor over a vanquished Israel. I have no desire to, no interest in wanting to humiliate it, embarrass it, degrade it, or as I say, push it against the wall so it feels like it has no choice except to strike out. We want a reasonable settlement. We want a settlement which allows everyone to live proud, productive, and peaceful lives. We want a settlement that allows everyone to live in dignity. And we want a settlement, obviously, which is in ac uh, accordance with the law, with what the world should look like. Now, you're right. In the real world, the law is often disregarded, and it's replaced by the use of a big club, and you crack people's skulls. But we're talking about how we think the conflict should end. And I think most people understand, maybe not people in power, but regular people, they understand the rule of law and that we should respect the law. And I think you can reach a large audience with that principle. And I think the audience is now ready to listen. And that's why I want to go to the United Nations and hopefully achieve a reasonable settlement of the conflict. And we're going to have to leave it right there. Thank you very much for staying down and speaking with me. Thank you.